Hi, how are you? It's Iris Klaasson. A very short video today. No fancy editing in After Effects or Premiere. Just me in front of my computer screen without even a microphone because I'm I was going to use this microphone but as you can see I am uh, missing some bits and pieces of it so I guess uh, I just have to use the computer microphone for now so I'm so sorry about the sound quality personally I'm quite picky about sound quality but yeah and no green screen I love to experiment with that stuff but I might be really crap at it I don't know you tell me Anyway, what do I want to talk about today? I want to show you something really cool in portable class libraries. If you know me, you know that I quite like portable class libraries and I don't want to get into the whole discussion about linked files, portable class libraries. We had this discussion on Twitter many times uh, last time, just a few days ago. and. It's, it's kind of a religious thing. You use what you feel most comfortable with and what fits the purpose best. But you should be aware of all the capabilities and limitations in both uh, solutions and also knowing that if you choose to combine the two, which I think a lot of developers will end up doing and that's my preferred way of working, of actually combining the two. Portable class libraries have had some fantastic improvements lately and one of those improvements you might not be aware of is that uh, you can now share XAML files, you can share views between a uh, Windows Store application and uh, Windows Phone, WinRT application. Now we could share XAML before, we could uh, share like half ass user controls, like really slim down and basically to the point where there was no purpose in even sharing that XAML and even sharing XAML resources was kind of a pain in the ass. So it's a great improvement, believe me, it's a great improvement. I'm going to show you a quick example and yeah, let's get started. I am not going to edit this video, so let's just get started. I'm going to start completely from scratch here. I'm inside the virtual machine and I'm going to create my very first project actually on this virtual machine. Now, if you're curious how I'm running the, uh, how I'm going to run the Windows Phone 8 emulator inside the virtual machine, you can check out some of the previous videos I've made. Now, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is obviously add a class library. If you don't know where to find it, I always seem to be looking for it. Just use the, the search in the top right corner, hit control plus E, and then you will write portable class library and you will find it. So I'm going to select that. That's going to be the first thing I add to uh, the solution. And here's what's important to notice. Make sure that you only select Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1. Do not select Silverlight anything or the .NET Framework 4.5.1 point long name. <laughs> After we've done that, it's going to open the portal, it's going to add the portable class library and under references, we should only see two, .NET and Windows. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the class file immediately because it's we're just not going to need it. The next thing we're going to go ahead and add is the two different projects which we are targeting. So go on the store apps and select Windows apps. Make sure you don't select the universal apps. And I'm going to create a Windows 8 a blank app. I'm going to add that to the solution. And then I'm going to go ahead and of course add a Windows Phone app as well on the Windows Phone and woo-ha, we have a lot to choose between here. I do however know that the top one is the WinRT one, although it doesn't say so, but it is. So, I mean, that certainly sends out a very clear message when it's at the, at the very top of the list and doesn't have any other specifications around it. Maybe that is the only future, who knows? Anyway, so I love Silverlight, Silverlight is nice. We have the two projects now, but we're not sharing anything. The first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and add a page to the class library. And if you added the correct references and targeted the right frameworks, you should be able to select a blank page here. And I'm going to call this main page. I had a lot of issues with this actually uh, in the beginning. So try a couple of times if you're having issues. I had to repair Visual Studio to be able to make it work. and I have ReSharper installed on my, my dev machine, not the virtual machine I'm in, and it will actually give me errors and just highlight all the XAML in red because I have ReSharper installed. So just so you know, you've been warned. 
The next thing I'm going to add in this uh, library is actually I'm just going to add a base class. And I'm going to tell you in a second why uh, we're adding this. One thing we can't share in the portable class library is the, the constructor uh, inside the, the app XAML CS file, which calls the initialize component, which is, let me zoom in here, which is this bit here. Because basically when it does this initialize component, there's a lot of like plumbing in the background that happens. It creates this static main method, which all applications have, which is where is the, it's the entry point of the application. And we need that, otherwise the application won't run. Well, theoretically, you could add this yourself, but because this is so nicely tied in with, with XAML and everything, I probably wouldn't want to mess around with that. I wasn't sure quite how to solve this, so I was lucky enough and <laughs> to manage to steal the email address to one of the portable class library um, dev guys on the team, and I harassed him uh, to help me solve this problem. And the solution was so simple, I was so embarrassed not thinking of it. Because I, I wanted to share all this code that is below, we can actually share between the platforms, but obviously I just wasn't able to share the app XAML, which I thought I could be able to share, but I wasn't able to. And he told me, why don't you just create a base class in the portable class library and do that? And I was like, oh, oh my god, you're so smart, you're so smart, that's why you work for Microsoft and I don't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm smart too, but he's certainly smarter than me. So I'm going to make a base class here, I'm just going to public class, base, something, and we need some uh, namespaces. I'm just copy and pasted them because I'm, I'm horrible at remembering uh, 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 references because I'm so used to using ReSharper. So I'm just uh, a little bit damaged there. So it has to inherit from application like the app XAML CS. I'm going to trim down this code a little bit and just um, just uh, not this bit here. I'm just remove some things that I know we're not going to need. I'm going to start off in the Windows 8 code because it's already quite trimmed down. And some of the things I'm just going to remove is, of course, the, um, all the comments. And look, Austin is online. Awesome. I got to remember to uh, <laughs> turn off uh, Skype when I'm doing recordings. So our navigation failed. We know we are going to succeed. We don't need our navigation fail. Everything I do just just works. All right, so, okay. Trim away this code, uh, trim away this code. And that's it. Okay, I'm gonna show you in a minute what I copied because I know I'm going like fast paced. So just any, everything below the constructor I've just copied and removed comments just because I'm a little bit OCD about it. I just hate comments generally unless they add a lot of value. So I'm going to go to the base class and I'm just going to go in and paste it all there. And with any luck, this should compile fine. So I'm just going to build, 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 build. Yay, one succeeded, awesome. The next thing we're going to do is to go ahead and add a reference to the port, uh, portable class library from the Windows 8 and the Windows Phone project. Add reference, class library, they're tiny, tiny little checkboxes, tiny, tiny. After I've done that, I have to go in, in here, and again, I'm going to remove everything that we're not using. Let me just go ahead and there, and it's going to inherit from the base class. And using class library, there, awesome, add the reference. Now, let me just make sure that this actually builds. All right, oh yeah, that's of course, uh, I need to make sure that it does that in that XAML page as well. So this is not going to work. So what we need to do is make sure that we actually use the right one. So we're going to use the class library, bup, 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 and then we're going to just make sure that we do local dot base. And let's see if that now 
works. Dun, 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 dun. It's a little bit slow. Yay, it works. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and make sure I do the exact same thing in the, um, the Windows application. local base and then I'm gonna go inside the code here and then make sure that it also uh, tiny boxes inherits from the right class and the last thing I'm going to do is just change the background here of the, um, the main page so we have something to look at I'm gonna make it yellow because yellow is a beautiful color and as you can see, I'm, I'm now in the, during design time, we're looking at the Windows Zone application. If you want to switch to a Windows 8 application, you use the navigation menu here above the XAML and just switch like that. Give it a little bit of time loading the designer. And oh, uh, Uncle Bob is also online on Skype. <laughs> I'm really going to turn off Skype. Sorry about that. Now let's see if this actually works. So... Uh, uh, let's rebuild this. I'm just gonna see if everything works, succeeds to my liking. Did it actually build? Rebuild, all two succeeded. All two succeeded, okay. Awesome, okay. Uh, set up a startup project, just because I gotta set it somewhere. And uh, I'm just gonna run in, run it in the simulator because I already opened it. And if everything works, we get the yellow page. Yay! We got the yellow page. I'm so excited. I don't need to do any editing. Ha ha. Okay, let's test the Windows Phone application. Now, if you want to switch uh, start a project easier, just you know, just use the drop down menu and just select Windows Phone 8 like I did now. And now, of course, I have to start the emulator, which we know takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to have a sip of coffee while you stare at the screen. Coffee is cold. Come on, come on, give me a yellow page. Give me a yellow page. That's blue, but that's the start screen. So give me... Deploy started. Things are happening. Files are being copied. Deployment is complete. And we have a yellow page! Ha! It works! So that, my dearest, is how you, uh, how you share a main page or how you share a XAML page like a boss in a portable class library. And yeah, that's it. As you can hear, my Skype is plinging. So I have a meeting to go to. So I got to run, but I'm going to upload everything and I'm going to share it with you. And no editing this time. Uh, I just wanted to do like a quick recording. Let me know what you prefer. Do you prefer this type of recording or do you prefer like the fancy green screen thing? I need some help because I'm experimenting. Um, yeah, let me know what you like, what you want. Ciao. So take care, have fun and... I've already said goodbye, so bye.